Hi, welcome to Connecting the Dots, the podcast where we share our stories from the battlefield of consulting. I'm your host, Johnny Hill. And I'm Rick Guidry. Hi, I'm Kylie Palmer. I'm Oscar Hernandez. Hey, I'm Kareem Jamal. So we all just got back from our annual summit in New York City. So while it's fresh on everyone's minds, we figured it would be worthwhile to share a little bit about why we value gathering in person in this way and some of the things that we all got out of it. So let's get started. So I think a good first question is just kind of talking about what even is the Expiro Summit? I see it as an event kind of designed to provide opportunities for us to meet each other in person, get some opportunity to network, share ideas, visions for our company in the next year, and just build those relationships with our colleagues. It, it is our high point of the year. It's a celebration of the previous year and what's to come, right? It's it's the Christmas version of Xfero, right? It's, uh, <laughs> it's that great. It's that great. Um, and so it is just an opportunity to celebrate all the, the great work and achievements we've done in the past year and where everyone comes together to see and uh, network and socialize in person as a thank you for their hard work uh, and get to meet all the people that you only have seen through zoom or calls or other means right but not in person yeah. right and it's also it's a little bit of a, a run-in tradition i think we've been doing it for six or seven years in a row at this point uh, we did do it after covid uh remote only and that was a little bit of a, an experimental endeavor but we're, we're still able to make it work but it's been a, a yearly tradition for several years now yeah i think at least six or seven years at this point and it's uh yeah there's the annual you know once a year get together in person but we also kind of try to keep it going throughout the year with quarterly what we call mini summits where we still encourage everyone if you're in kind of a, a central hub like a city where you know in austin we have several experiments all together we encourage everyone hey come into the office someone will buy donuts i'll have coffee we'll get together for half a day and and kind of do a condensed version just for for half a day and and then i'll share a meal together and celebrate hey here's what's going on this quarter here here's some wins here's some things we can all learn from each other so it's kind of become a central part of kind of the fabric of expiro uh this emphasis on on gathering and sharing time and a meal and information and knowledge with each other uh, so th so this year we met in New York City, which is a first. We've we've always gathered together physically somewhere, but usually it's been in Texas. Uh, so this year we gathered in New York City. Let, let's talk a little bit about that. Like what what was special about that? Why is that important? And why why do we value going through that extra step of of encouraging people to gather together in person when usually we're such a remote company? I mean, for me, nothing beats just the shared experiences in person. So like. Yeah, I'm actually in our Austin office. Like I'm one of the few people who come in day in, day out. I just like to be able to have a space where I work. And one of my favorite things pre-COVID was the lunch. Everybody else was kind of coming in. We go out. It was just a nice break in the day to get to like share experiences and stuff. And to me, just the idea of being able to share experiences in person just amplified beyond belief going to a city that at least the majority of groups I was hanging out with during my time there hadn't been there either ever where it had been a very, very long time. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, just those shared experiences, just being able to talk about that, uh, that camaraderie aspect was just, for me, excellent. I like that we chose New York City for the fact that, yeah, everything was right there. We either could walk or take a subway somewhere. And our sessions were at the same hotel we were staying at. So we had a lot of time to socialize and all be right there. And do little things together, whether it was running down the street to my favorite place, Blank Slate, to eat for lunch or little things like that. I really enjoyed that New York's where we went just for everything being right there. And in the city of many things to do, whether it was Broadway shows, the comedy club, many social activities that we were all able to um, participate in. Yeah, adding to that, it's like why New York City, it just represents our values, right? Because we value the people above everything else, our people. And so 
having a stellar year, what better way to reward them than taking them to the capital of the world, right? It's a little more expensive, yeah, uh, probably an understatement, but you know, it's like, <laughs> hey, we, we love you guys, so we're going to reward you uh, as well. Yeah, I think kind of keying off of that, something that Rick mentioned was, you know, this was a, a unique experience for a lot of people in our company being the first time they were in New York City and getting to experience that together, maybe at the same time as also this being the first time you're meeting some of these people you've worked with uh, in person. You know, I, I know, at least for me, there were several people who I've worked very closely with for a year or more. And for one reason or another, never met them in person, usually because we're very distant a lot of people who I work with are, are in the Canary Islands and they were very excited to, to come to New York and get to see the city and getting to kind of share that enthusiasm and, and seeing new things with them while also just getting to know them as people and saying, hey, I've, I've worked with you, but I'd love to get to know you as a person, you know, and getting to share meals with each other, getting to explore the city together. Uh, those kinds of opportunities, I think, are really, really special and easy to understate the value of them. Uh, those those kind of just personal moments between the work that makes it easier to work together and to know each other. And yeah, I, th I think there's something really special about that, that that was really valuable to me this year. Yeah. Yeah. When you when you meet people in person for the first time after working remote with them for a really long time, it's like when you are having a conversation through text alone, you miss a lot of the face to face interaction and body language that people can give off. So you get a better ideas of, you know, what people are thinking about things. Um, and also you don't really as much get the chance as when you're working remote to have a genuine conversation about how you feel about uh, certain things. You know, typically it's just, this is what we have to do. You know, let's compromise or, or determine the best way to do things. And then you're off the meeting so that we can minimize each other's times. Um, being stuck in meetings, so it's it was it's good to be able to talk to people without that pressure of having to wrap it up. I was gonna say humans are social creatures, right? So we we just there there's something special about meeting in person and just meeting face to face and sitting down that sort of breaks all other barriers that you may have, right? And then after that, working remotely just feels a lot more natural, having had that face to face interaction. Yeah, I think there's also, there's an element of, at least for me, when we've done Summit in years past, it feels like a company vacation in some ways. Like, yes, we're all, we are all meeting together in person and working during the day. But as soon as five o'clock rolls around, someone goes up to the front, you know, whatever room we're all in together and says, hey, stop working and go have a meal together or stop working and go check out the Empire State Building. It's in walking distance or, you know, stuff like that. And so it's, it's cool that like, yeah, during the day, during the you know, normal work day, we're, we're doing normal work things or in sessions and sharing you know, knowledge with each other. But there's a sense that, okay, five o'clock rolls around and we're all still together. What do we want to do? Do we want to do a game night? Do we want to go see a show? Do we want to, you know, and just being in this place where there's all these opportunities to after hours still interact and still have that quality time together to get to know each other in maybe a different context, I think is really special. We even lock up the conference room to kick people out so that they go do these things. Otherwise, they're sitting in front of the computer. <laughs> I agree with that. It's nice to get to know people you've worked with, but also like working at a company that's not huge, you pretty much heard of everyone. So you'll hear, oh, this person did great on this, but you haven't worked with them directly. So even just meeting those people in person and getting to know each other face to face, it just, yeah, adds a sense of relationship more personable to where like if you did work with them in the future it just you have a little bit more of a comfort level there versus if you never met them before in person and never worked with them so I just really enjoyed meeting some of the people I haven't worked with that I've heard a lot about as well it's, it's the sort of the same logic of why we when we can like to kick off projects with in-person kickoffs right it's just mm -hmm. there's no sort of replacement for that face to face and it really just makes things that follow much easier. And so if we like to do that with clients, you know, why not ourselves? It makes it easier uh, for us as well to work as a team once that experience has happened, right? Like breaking bread together, preferably bread covered in butter and garlic and filled with cheese, <laughs> gooey cheese. Uh, but you know. It's just outside the normal routine, right? Like even 
though I'm in Austin and Kareem's in Houston, I know the couple of times I worked from the Houston office, like even that almost is like a mini event, right? It's just people you don't typically see and you get to hang out with. It's like, well, I don't normally go to lunch, but hey, let's go to lunch. <laughs> I think one interesting thing is like, you know, since we are such a remote first and remote friendly company, I think there's a little bit of it that's kind of a surprise when people, you know, first start and say, oh, well, I've been remote my whole time at Expiro but y'all seem to really still value gathering in person. That seems kind of incompatible. Uh, I don't think it actually is incompatible, but it, it, it can seem like a little bit of like, those are at odds having a very remote friendly company and highly valuing in-person face-to-face time. So, uh, you know, I think Summit is part of how we try to get around that and try to still enable that face-to-face time. But uh, I don't know, like what what is it about that dynamic that, you know, can maybe make it a challenge or, you know, it's a unique opportunity where, we have that very remote friendly culture, but also very high emphasis on, you know, interaction physically when possible. I think it also has a lot to do with the, like the people we work with. So it's not like if we have the opportunity to do something together, it's not something anyone dreads. I don't think we all mm. encourage it just because again, we're all human. We like the social interaction. I think we have an amazing work culture. So I think they kind of do tie in together. Like as much as we like to be remote, we also like to hang out (laughs) and like to do stuff together as a team. We all pass the airport test for each other. (laughs) (laughs) For those who don't know, Rick, what is the airport test? Ah, so the airport test is if I were to go on a business trip and I miss my flight and I'm stuck with coworkers, how likely am I to be able to pass the time until I'm able to board a next flight? And uh might be a segue, but I think there are some people who got to put that to the test this summit. I was about to well. say, I think uh with with yeah, one one key element of gathering everyone in person and flying in is uh at least some will have flight trouble. And in in this case, a lot of people had flight trouble. So I think yeah, several people got to do that for real. And I think it went pretty well. And that was before the pilots uh going on strike. So couldn't just <laughs> Before the pilots going on strike, after the FAA glitch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that sweet spot. <laughs> right. <laughs> so we we did actually do work while we were in in New York. Let's let's talk a little bit about that. So we we had a, a space <laughs> set aside, and we had we were there for a full week. First part of that week, normal work days, just encouraging everyone to be physically together, working on your projects, having stand ups in person, maybe actually standing up. Uh, but halfway through the week, we kind of transitioned to more of a conference format where we had things that we were learning from each other, different speakers, panels, uh, group events and exercises, things like that. So let's let's talk a little bit about like that structure, what people got out of that, uh, why we set things up that way for that amount of time instead of, you know, just meeting over, you know, kind of a long weekend kind of format. And, uh, you know, what, why were those decisions made? How is that helpful for people? What did y'all get out of it? That kind of thing. We had different style meetings, whether it be workshops, keynote sessions, panels. We had guest speakers come in. And especially on the design end of things, I really like our workshops because it really gives us a chance to learn something new from some of our fellow experonauts and be able to bounce ideas off of each other. And I think it's a really good learning opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. When you're working with people remotely, a lot of the times you're working with people who do similar things to you or who are closely related to the thing that you're working on. And it was cool to see, um, to hear uh, people's perspective from completely different areas of what you you work on and having a discussion about that with them was really, really helpful. Oscar, I'm curious, is it different for you? Do you have a slightly different perspective because out of everybody on this call, you're the only one who's not like next to an actual satellite office of Xperia. So this is probably like one of the few times you actually get to interact in person. Like those of us in Austin may at least do like a lunch every month and Kareem, I'm assuming it's something similar in Houston, but you know, you you really are like a real remote worker. You know, do you enjoy this time even more? Um, yeah, like to that original question we had of like, why we even bother to meet in person for us who are in my situation, it's the only time we get to meet in person unless we're flying to, uh, to Austin or to, to Houston, um, for a particular project. So, um, it's, it's really the only time where you get to have that authentic conversation with people where you can actually talk, like pick people's brains about what they know and, um, 
and then really understand to where they're coming from in an environment that's not pressurized like your eight hour day. It's a better opportunity to really get to know people, right? The non-work side of people at a personal level, right? Hey, that guy seems serious on Zoom calls, but you know what? He's actually pretty funny, uh, you know? So it, it helps with that because when you're on your Zoom calls, it's, hey, meeting started. Okay, let's get to work. Meeting ended. Everyone's jumping off to the next thing, right? So there's not that much room for chit chat or, you know, uh, water cooler talk, especially if you're not in an office. And so it's, you know, really one large, long water cooler event, right? <laughs> <laughs> it really increases engagement. Yeah. Like, I feel a lot more com- like not that I ever felt uncomfortable talking to people, but it's just like, hey, I met them there. I have this question. It's a lot easier to reach out and not have to introduce myself because they already met me at Summit. So just that increased engagement with people from all over since we are all over. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I know for me, I, I tried to make a point to sit at a different table each day when we were having sessions just so that I would have you know that many more opportunities to maybe get to know people who I don't normally interact with or who I've never been on a project with or who are newer. Uh, and, and that was really cool. Like you, like you were saying, you get to see this other side of people when you're just sitting down next to them for, you know, a full day of, of sessions and bouncing ideas off each other during the group activities. And you know, you, there's some people, I think, uh, yeah, the Kareem mentioned like, oh, they're funnier in person than I thought they were like, I thought they were super serious. And like, I think that's one of the downsides of working at a company where everyone is super talented and super smart it's easy to be like intimidated by each other and think like, Oh, they're that guy's so smart. There's no way he's like also got this goofy side or like, but then we also have these activities where we're like finding people who, you know, do you collect anything unique? Are you an only child? Do you like karaoke? Like we had these kind of icebreaker questions and you learn a lot about people when (laughs) when you're going around a room trying to figure out the three people who like karaoke. Uh, But it was a, it was a good opportunity to get to see that other side of people and, and gathering in person. And at least for me, I, I really valued, even though it was kind of loud and kind of awkward and maybe kind of hard to get as much done as I normally would in my quiet office by myself. There's something fun about being in a room with 80 other people all at different tables working on different stuff and you can bounce ideas off each other. And, you know, if you need to take a call, you can go off to the side and find a quiet spot. But there was something special about just working on normal stuff those first couple of days we were there just among other people. And then, you know, oh, lunchtime rolls around. Hey, who's going where? And jumping in with the group and just kind of seeing what happens. There's kind of this sense of adventure and newness that you lose when you're when you're working remote some or most of the time. Or even if you're in an office just with not as many people, you're kind of interacting with other people in other ways. And, and that was really special for me. I agree with that we were working on a project and it was nice because like Sarah had an idea and she was actually able to sketch it out. I could like see it without her, like having to hold (laughs) it up on the screen and everything. So. And and it does really improve and uh, create opportunities for that cross project knowledge sharing. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, Because once uh, as a remote first company, we're working on our projects day in, day out. And uh, you know, not everyone's in an office. uh, So those water cooler, events just don't happen where people are standing around and talking about ideas and it's like oh you did that oh I have to do that too tell me how you approach that right so just this random happenstance uh, opportunities that come up because someone else has worked something similar to you and you can uh, get some ideas from them and brainstorm together right yeah. yeah and plus it's a it's a helpful way hey we got everyone in the room together let's talk about some of the things we worked on so we did like project highlights and kind of an overview of where were we last year? Where are we going this year? Let's all get on the same page. Let's all kind of, you know, brainstorm together. Uh, You know, we had one activity that was really just like, all right, in the table you're sitting with, what are you good at? And what do you want to be better at? And how can we help each other with that? Just because, you know, when you're, when you're trying to do that by yourself, it's really hard. But when you're among a group of other people, and they're all kind of naming things off and saying, no, 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 I've seen you do that. You're good at that thing. It's just a different dynamic. And it helped kind of helps get the gears turning. And that was a lot of fun for me to get to be at one of those tables. And, you know, we had sticky notes. We were sticking on each other saying, all right, you're good at this. So I'm going to stick that on your forehead now, <laughs> which is fun. <laughs> There's definitely a go- there was a goofy element to it, but it made it more fun and, and more engaging. Yeah. A, a lot of times I hear too, like during summit, people say, oh, wow, I had no idea that Xperia did that. Mm-hmm. Or I had no idea that that product feature was out there. So yeah, it's a, it's a great 
time to exchange ideas to know to know what's going on with the company and then help improve them on a consulting level too. Yeah, when you see how many other smart people are around you and what they're good at, it can kind of get the wheels turning like, oh, I want to get better at that too. Or I want to, now I know I can ask them for help on that thing or, or learn from them when you know maybe you wouldn't have interacted with that person otherwise since you're not on the same project. Especially with that sticky note, I was at a table, I think there's one other designer. It was mainly sales or tech. I think Cream might have been in my group. And it was just really fun, yeah, to hear their side of things where they think they excel at being in multidisciplinary sides mm -hmm. of what we offer at Xperio. So I enjoyed that aspect. So one other key tradition element of Summit that has happened every year is uh, what we call our awards dinner, which is a special time set aside where we, we all share a meal together, go out, you know, we dress up fancy. It's kind of like the Oscars, but for Xperio. And we take time to call out specifically hey, here are people who have kind of gone above and beyond. Here, here are some people who've done amazing things this year. We want to recognize them. We want to you know, kind of give a little speech where you don't say exactly who they are until the very end to build that suspense and tension. But uh, it's kind of this unique, special, kind of small company aspect that we've been able to hang on to as we've grown over the years. Uh, I'm curious, just kind of talking a little bit about that awards dinner, how, how that has stuck with you or, or anything from that that was particularly special or meaningful. Uh, or just how y'all feel about the fact that we do that here at Xperia? For me, it's the highlight of the highlight, right? Like Summit is a highlight of the year and the awards dinner is the highlight of Summit for me. Uh, you know, and that's just that dinner, that going all out, crazy amounts of food, everyone's decked out, red carpets, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> sort of, as you said, you know, like the the Oscars uh, and Oscar was there. So, you know, I definitely was the Oscars. <laughs> uh, and the Kylie's and the Ricks and the Johnny's and, you know, giving out awards for people that have like really, really excelled and, you know, uh, set the bar high um, and things like that. It's just sort of the culmination of everything great that has gone on in the past year. I think also with like having that dinner. Yeah, it's really good food. Everyone's dressed nice. You have a little bit of a happy hour right before. And I just think it really helps like boost our motivation and morale to like really strive for an award or just be able to celebrate ourselves. We're again, eating great food and great company all together, dress nice. I enjoyed it. Yeah. And I think um, even while we're in summit and having all these great conversations with everybody and learning all this stuff, um, you're still at work, you know, you're still logging hours. And so to do something after work collectively, as a group, there's an, another dynamic to that sociability. Even after we've met um, in person during summit, um, once we go to dinner, you, you see even more conversation happening mm -hmm. and more people meeting other people that they have never met before. So, It's also fun because people usually bring their spouse or their significant other to the to the awards dinner. So you get to, you get to know them, you get to see uh, this other side of your coworkers uh, and, and it's kind of a fun way to get to get to know each other better and, and get to get to meet some new people there as well. So that's always fun. So to wrap up, let's just go around. You know, we did, we obviously had you know, like three full days full of sessions. If people just have kind of one takeaway that they had from summit, it can be from the sessions. It can be from an interaction you had with a coworker. It could be from an after activity. You know, you went to a great comedy club and heard the best joke you've ever heard or something like that. But uh, I'll, I'll go first to, to kick things off. So for me, one of the takeaways, we had a whole session just about, how can we do meetings better and in particular have fewer meetings and just improve our communication because it's super easy to just add meetings to the calendar left and right that don't actually need to happen so that was a good challenge for me to think through okay recording a podcast yeah we probably need to have a meeting for that i don't know if we could record a podcast over text at least not yet and chat gpt isn't quite there yet but um but it was a helpful challenge thinking you know hey think before you schedule that next meeting how can you make sure that you're you know, enabling your coworkers to do the best work they can do is putting a meeting at that block of time going to interrupt their flow, that kind of a thing. So that was, that was really helpful just talking through strategies for how to cut back on that, how to make sure that um, focus time stays protected and uh, how to, how to help your yourself and your coworkers with that. Yeah. Um, for me, it was, uh, was and is how um, summit sets the tone for the rest of the year. Mm. So the following summit. Um, everybody takes away what they've learned from Summit and the goals 
and uh, you know any insights that they've learned over the course of those days, and they apply it to the rest of the year. Um, so, to me, it's it's really cool to see how people take the information that they they get from Summit and apply it um, in ways that help them uh, for the rest of the year. For me, it's twofold. I can do two, right? You said takeaways. That's plural. Yes, so I can do yes. You can do two, Kareem. <laughs> okay. I give you permission. <laughs> uh, so uh, the first is really, uh, and we we touched on this, but in in a remote first first world now, post COVID, especially, it's like you know, take every opportunity you can to have that in person interaction, right? Uh, mm -hmm. That doesn't mean go overboard, and uh, you know, it doesn't mean going back to that. Hey, Monday through Friday, I fly out to client sites and then sit there and then come back for the weekend. Cause a lot of that is not needed, but like, Hey, for kickoffs or wrap ups or in between or other, you know, places uh, let's, let's take those opportunities and be mindful of people's time as well. And then the second thing is celebrate your people, right. Regardless of, you know, what you're going through your people, especially in a consulting company like ours are your, you know, key asset. They are the main focus. My, my takeaway is pretty similar. Um, I mean, all the company stuff's great. I love hearing what people are working with, but you know, honestly, at the end of the day, it, it's just the people and being able to spend time with them outside of work with an allocated block dedicated to really just hanging out. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't know what I would be doing every night or what group I'd be doing with, but I knew I'd be doing something with other experiments. And for some reason that just, you know, that was a key thing to me. It's just uh, being able to hang out with team members that I just don't get to see that often. And mm -hmm. having hit New York and experience all at the same time together, oh, chef kiss. <laughs> <laughs> I would agree with that. My takeaways, one, I did really like our round robin style, almost discussions where we had like a specific thing we were gonna talk about, but we actually had time to be in smaller groups and really discuss things in depth. So I liked that. And then again, yes, I liked our after session um, events. And yeah, maybe a lot of other companies that kind of do something like this, they might plan like their own individual things to do in the evenings. I really like how we love to hang out with our coworkers. So always having something to do in the evenings with fellow experience, whether that's go get pizza, go to the comedy club. Um, I had a blast. <laughs>stop and sort of uh smell the people smell the people um and, uh, <laughs> uh, but appreciate the people <laughs> i'll try to edit that out no promises though it's pretty good i'll leave that in <laughs> that, might, that might make the ending tag that we leave after if people listen to the whole thing <laughs>